I would have never been able to do this with my stock original bumper. Off-road bumpers are perhaps one of the most misunderstood modifications of them all. Are they legal? Would the airbags not deploy? What about pedestrian safety? We'll discuss all this and as always help you make an informed decision and help you answer the final question. Do you really need one? I had posted a poll on the Tripicino community to learn what is the most important factor that people would like to know about off-road bumpers. The result was interesting. More than any other factor about the bumper itself or its functionality, the majority wanted to know about its legality. Well, we will surely talk about that. But first, in typical Trupuccino style, let's break down the tech and the mech behind this modification and understand its long and short term side effects. Many types of off-road bumpers based on their design and construction. First type is the full width bumper, like the one I'm using. It runs end to end and completely protects the front end, replacing the stock bumper. The second type is the mid width bumper. You may have seen this on some of the thars. They expose the wheels and cover only the front mid section. The third are the pre-runner bumpers, which are made of tube construction and wrap around the front like a chin guard for protection and off-road mountings. The fourth is the stubby bumper, which consists of a stubby thick block of metal mounted on the front end. Let's now see what are the aftermarket options available for the four score car front end bumper in India. While the Mahindra Thar has a full spectrum of aftermarket options, the Gurkha has only limited choices. There, there are a few chop shops which are making them specific for the Gurkha BS6. And I'm happy to see that nowadays our domestic aftermarket builders are increasing their scope and quality of their products. Bonn Automotive Tech or BAT 4WD has a good short width option. So if you don't need or intend to install a winch ever, then this is a compact alternative. And I think the form factor works very well and is comparable in size to the stock bumper. Win 4x4 had a rad modified Gurkha, which had a front bumper. Interestingly, it also had a rear metal bumper. This is a winch compatible option from Metal House Blue Garage. I've also seen a customized fiber option from Bimbra. That is an interesting alternative to the stock bumper if you want functionality but still don't want to go with the all metal construction. And Prad 4x4 has the XPD winch compatible bump. Full disclosure. I am in no way being sponsored or paid promoting these brands or products. I'm just glad that these options are available in our market and just want to put out the information I have collected for the benefit of our viewers. Now, I have a big complaint with all our domestic manufacturers. My complaint is that the product information available about these is either nil or very minimal on their websites or Instagram or wherever they are advertising. So customers like us have to inquire annoyingly and ask the right questions to help us understand the product and if it is suitable for our application. And frankly, everyone might not know what are the right questions to ask. In other matured markets, they have a full blown product information brochure, including installation instructions, and some even include their CAD drawings, which would be Christmas for someone like myself if I have to tinker with it a bit more. I understand the volumes in our market are not yet big enough to justify full blown marketing and customer awareness effort, but we have to start now. If our Indian off-road products aspire to be counted against international brands. Anyway, instead of just ranting about it, I designed this spec sheet, a detailed product information brochure for the Pratt bumper, which I'm using. I have included all the broad first line info that I would have liked to know when I was shopping around for bumpers. More detail beyond this can always be inquired after a preliminary shortlist. I will link this brochure in the description in case you're interested. 
I have chosen the XPD winch compatible bumper from Brad 4x4. I picked it up during their 10% off Black Friday sale. I already use Brad's underbody armor. See that video here. And I'm happy with that quality. I have bashed it brutally off road and it has held up to abuse very well. So I went again for this bumper also from them because it also mates perfectly to the underbody armor in one neat continuous contour. It's a perfect fit for the BS6 Gurkha front end and comes with all the nuts and bolts you need for installation. The quality is top notch, it's CNC cut and perfect and direct fit to the Gurkha. It does come with a detachable bull bar in case you need it, I didn't go for it. Detachable side wings and a 6mm winch plate, 3.5 ton rated shackle holders with functional recovery points. Another big reason why I chose this particular model was this. It has slots for a high lift jack so you can recover the truck from the front end or even fix a flat tire using this useful feature. These slots are common in international models but in India I found this only on this Pratt bumper. However, it's not as simple or as direct an installation like the underbody armor was. That was a direct bolt on but this bumper job requires a proper garage assistance with some heavy equipment to drill in for the size 16 bolts that they give. Once installed, the fit and finish is great, but there are some things that could be improved. First, the winch tray top cover. It would be good for folks like myself who don't have a winch ready for installation if the bumper came complete with this top plate covering the winch tray cavity. I had to make this one on my own cost and get it powder coated to match the bumper and so that the tray can be covered till I plonk a winch into it. The second is that the wheel well shape has effectively changed now. And with it, we have lost the fender lining. If we do nothing, the gaping hole behind the off-road bumper is going to get a lot of slush and muck caked in and start havoc there. I had to make this bracket additionally to tuck in some extra fender lining from front and back to keep debris from flying into the bumper. Let's understand why should we even switch from the original stock bumper. The first reason is strength and protection. The stock bumper is pretty strong for its material and is well made. But for off-road use, if you intend to try something rough, the stock bumper will obviously not take abuse. It was simply not built for that kind of application and it will shear off the moment you do serious stuff. The second is the road-based design of the stock bumper. Road bumpers are designed first for aerodynamics because it is the leading edge, the nose of the vehicle and therefore will increase drag and affect fuel consumption. The second statutory requirement is pedestrian safety. That's why we don't see any more factory metal bumpers like what the old ambassadors or even the previous gen boleros used to wear. That's because modern fiber bumpers have crumple zones built into them which absorb force on impact so that the pedestrians are not hurt badly. Also, the design is in a way that if the bumper hits a walker, the contours are so that they scoop and push the pedestrian up on the bonnet and not under the car. This is the reason we see some wacky and weird curves on modern bumpers. This is a major factor that dictates car front design. If there is a collision with an obstacle, these bumpers are designed to crumple and use up the energy of the impact to deform themselves so that the force is not transmitted to the vehicle or its occupants. For off-road use, we need the opposite. We need the bumpers to do the opposite and be durable and take hits and hence the strong metal construction is needed. The next reason is for approach angle. The factory bumper does not aim or is not designed to increase approach angle, while the off-road bumper gives us a clear advantage 
in that sense. A similar story for departure angle if you install a rear metal bumper. The trade-off for gaining approach angle closer to the ground is the increased overhang. Because the off-road bumper now extends well ahead of the bonnet end, the total length has increased and the angle will become more acute as we move higher. This also means that we need to account for the increased about 10.5 inches length in our driving judgment ahead of the bonnet. The next reason is mounting points. The offered bumper readily offers and gives a base to mount auxiliary lights, bull bars and other accessories which would not be possible on a stock fiber bumper. The other important reason is recovery. The stock Gurkha has almost no recovery points on the front, so off-road if you need to be winched out, you can't rely on the towing eye which is so low and one-sided. You might not even be able to access it if you're stuck in slush. Installing this off-road bumper adds extraction points to the front and also moves them higher on the bumper away from the ground. So higher tow points make it easier for the winch and also keep the winching line out of the mud. The mounting method of the original bumper is meant only to support its own weight and so it limits installing anything heavy on them. And recovery or lifting with my favorite weapon of choice, the farm jack, can be a game changer or lifesaver off-road, depending on how deep of a mess you have got yourself into. And as always in this channel, let us discuss the side effects of this modification. First is the added weight. This bumper tips the scales at about 40 kilograms. Add a winch and you will be doubling that. Now many would say that 80 kilograms is not much for a 2.5 ton vehicle. But that's an incorrect way to look at modifications and added weight. What is more important than the weight itself is how that weight gets distributed across the vehicle. Here in the bumper case, it's all concentrated on the extreme nose end of the vehicle, ahead of its front suspension. Imagine an 80 kilogram adult sitting on the front bumper all the time, rather than sitting inside the cabin and you will understand the difference. This front bias means that we have to ask ourselves few important questions. Can your front suspension handle the added weight? Almost the entire weight of the car is sprung up on the suspension springs and when we add weight, especially unbalanced weight like this, it's going to load up that side more than intended by the original design. As I said in a previous video, the suspension upgrade must be the last modification you do to account for all the weight changes you have done on the vehicle. And I will be upgrading the suspension at the next stage with higher rated springs and beefier struts to take the extra load and perform better off-road. Because do remember, each time you slam the brakes or hit a bump or drop into a ditch, that nose dive with all that added weight is going to wham the front IFS and we will have to prepare for that. Second is how is the handling and the steering affected? The front bias weight will affect handling and steering because of the same aforesaid reason and because you have in effect altered the weight balance and hence the dynamics of the vehicle. This was no corner cover to start with, but you would definitely feel the difference in handling and cornering especially with the heavy nose. The mileage will also come down because of this modification. This is the steering assembly of the Gurkha. So we have two tie rods and a simple hydraulic system in the middle. As we give steering input, that side responds by moving the tie rod in and out. This end of the tie rod is connected to the spindle, the steering knuckle. And uh, as we move the steering, the steering knuckle is turned around by the tie rod. So it's a pretty simple system. Why does the steering and handling get affected? Well, we need to understand some basics of vehicle dynamics to explain this. The farther away from the center of gravity of the vehicle you add weight, it is going to increase its polar moment of inertia. Simply put, it's like trying to run and turn around a track with dumbbells 
with arms extended and doing the same with arms close to your chest obviously the farther the weight moves away from the center of gravity the more difficult it gets to control same way our offered bumpers both front and rear are adding heavy weights with long lever arms farthest away from the center of gravity and this is going to show up immediately in the way the vehicle handles heavy weight on the front wheels will show tendency to understeer and not corner well and this will become immediately apparent to the discerning driver another interesting thing which no one talks about is by placing unbalanced weights on both sets of tires we are changing the contact patch area of the tires relative to each other the more lower a tire tends to squat and have a longer and wider patch than the relaxed tire this will also change dynamics acceleration and braking how is the braking going to change the braking distance will increase after the off road bumper is installed because logically one more weight and hence more momentum and hence more work to stop the vehicle but this reason is a minor contributor because the added mass is actually not much in this case compared to the vehicle mass the abs is going to make things more complex because the wheels have more weight on them and will lock differently the more re- interesting reason is number 2 something about weight transfer and brake dive geometry which we discussed in a previous video the weight transfer from back wheels to the front wheels when we slam the brakes which require a brake dive geometry design gets more pronounced because of this added weight ahead of the front wheels it's like trying to pull and stop a weight which is running downhill because the bumper weight is ahead of the braking wheels so braking distance is going to be more and you need to remember that as an important side effect of adding an off road bumper will the airbags deploy like many of our videos it is time again to bust another popular myth the myth goes like this that plastic bumpers are softer and hence on impact the crash sensor gets hit and this activates airbags metal bumpers on the other hand are hard and on impact don't deform so the crash sensor is intact and so the airbags won't deploy at all or will deploy with much delay this popular myth has been marketed widely even by many auto magazines and news publications just google it and you will get the same story everywhere this myth is not true before i bust the myth i will put up the disclaimer that metal bumpers are major modifications of the vehicle and are not as per original design and hence airbag deployment will be affected it is a safety hazard please be warned and don't use such bumpers for on road use it is dangerous this channel does not condone or endorse it in any any way now to bust the myth let's understand how airbags work the idea that the sensor has to get crushed and break to activate airbag is completely incorrect because the sensor is not even located on the bumper as the myth seems to suggest secondly the sensor doesn't need to physically get crushed because it is not based on impact it is based on deceleration let me explain this using this exaggerated model i have made crash sensors come in many shapes and sizes but the underlying principle is fundamentally the same imagine the sensor as a tube it consists of a magnet holding a metal ball at one end and on the other end an open circuit under normal speeds and usage the ball is held by the magnet and the circuit on the other end remains open when the car suddenly decelerates the sensor with the magnet which are attached to the vehicle chassis comes to stop along with the vehicle so for normal stops sudden stops or even low speed crashes the magnet holds on to the ball and the circuit remains open and so the airbags won't inflate but at a particular rate of deceleration the ball overcomes the magnetic pull because of inertia gets dislodged and is thrown forward and completes the circuit in the other end this sends a signal to the airbag ecu which sets a small explosive charge of a chemical like sodium azide instantly inflating the airbag the airbag ecu also sends a signal parallelly to the seat belt pretensioner for both driver and co-driver depending on occupancy so that the belts tighten and brace the occupants 
Load limiters will gradually release this tension so that the seat belts don't hurt the occupants by holding them under strong tension. For all this to happen, the deceleration must be more than a preset threshold. This depends on the specific vehicle. So if the deceleration is not sudden or drastic enough, even if the entire front bumper collapses, airbags won't inflate because the ball is still tucked to the magnet. For a real life example, check this vehicle. Full frontal impact, bumper collapse and radiator damage. But since the threshold was not breached, airbag sensor was not activated and the airbags did not deploy. Now that we know how the airbags work, let's return to the myth. In theory, the factory fiber bumper would crush and crumple and hence absorb energy better and therefore delays the stopping of the vehicle by taking time for its own deformation. So it would take longer to breach that threshold. In case of a metal bumper, since all the energy is transmitted without deformation, the deceleration is going to be more drastic and hence the airbag would in theory deploy earlier and not with delay as the myth suggests. Again, be warned, this is in no way good for the occupants because everything is timed precisely within microseconds and an earlier inflation may not be synchronous with the head and neck being cushioned during the forward motion when the load limiters gradually release the pretension. Bottom line is that if you change the bumper design, the operation of the airbag will change. It will still, it may still deploy, but not as intended by original design. The Gurkha airbag sensor is located here, well behind the headlights. You can see the wiring running to the airbag ECU. While fitting this off-road bumper, we have ensured that we have not disturbed the sensor in any way and have retained it as is with the original frame on which it is mounted. In international markets, companies like ARB sell aftermarket crash tested and approved bumpers. They pump in a lot of money and invest in vehicle crash barrier tests to ensure that the performance and compliance of the airbag compatible bumpers are maintained. They will evaluate each vehicle's frontal cash crash characteristics and will try to duplicate that same characteristics in the design of each of their airbag approved bumpers. By doing this, they will ensure that the vehicle's crumple rate and the airbag triggering mechanism are not altered when an off-road bumper is installed. In our domestic market, even our car makers are a long way from there. So for aftermarket players, it's a high ask, but I do hope we eventually get there in the future. Now coming to the popular question, is it legal? Point blank answer, no, it is not road legal. Though there is nothing specifically against metal bumpers, there is a clear 2017 Road Transport Ministry notification against the use of unauthorized metal crash guards and bull bars. This points to the blanket clause of unauthorized alteration of vehicles under Section 52 of the Motor Vehicles Act 1988 and refers to penalties under Section 190 and 191. These provisions together make any sort of structural and even engine modification illegal. And under this blanket, one could very well be penalized and chalant for the obvious metal bumper, which literally sticks out on the face. The debate of the validity, enforcement and relevance of these laws are a separate issue altogether. I use Django exclusively for off-road use and it is pegged out with an exclusive off-road bias. And so this bumper makes sense to me. I have another Pepe Turbo Petrol with DCT as my daily driver and for on-road usage. Please exercise due diligence if you would be using these bumpers anywhere else except off-road. Just for aesthetics and looks, I wouldn't recommend switching to these off-road metal bumpers for on-road use cars because by now you would have understood that you tend to lose more than you gain on-road. But off-road bumpers are great utility off the road and definitely make functional sense if your usage and the kind of off-roading you do demand it. Mild overlanding and trail riding definitely do not need this kind of an off-road bumper. With that, 
i will hope that you have all the info on this topic to help you make a well informed decision thanks for your time and please do subscribe to the channel and see these bumpers in off road action if you found this video useful share it with others who may need it drop a line in the comments below if you want to know anything else about the bumper or the force gurka in general i'll see you soon in the next interesting video until then bye bye